Well, another year has come and gone, and all I can say is fuck you, 2016. Not only has this been an incredibly shitty year for what's going on worldwide, uh, not only has this been a shitty year in terms of celebrity deaths, but it's also been kind of a shitty year in terms of my personal life, to be fair. Uh, but in terms of movies, it's been a mediocre year. This is one of the more mediocre years in movies I've seen in a while. So mediocre, in fact, that a lot of the movies on this list, uh, I didn't really hate. I just thought they were bad, but eh, whatever. So that's what we're doing. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I always do my worst of first. I know everybody out there does their best stuff first, like Jeremy Johns, Chris Stuckman, Schmoes. No, I like to get the negative stuff out of the way first and end the year on a positive note. And given how shitty this year has been, we need to end it on a positive note. So let's just jump into my personal worst movies of 2016. Now, like with every worst of list I do, I always have to start off with the biggest disappointment of 2016, the movie that I was really looking forward to, saw it, and either liked it, but started to like it less and less to the point where I didn't like it as time went on, or I didn't like it despite all my excitement for it. And this year, that movie for me is X-Men Apocalypse. I loved X-Men Days of Future Past. I love X-Men First Class. I love X-Men and X2, the first two movies that Brian Singer did. So with him coming back in the director's chair for Apocalypse, I thought, okay, he's gonna make another really badass X-Men movie. I saw it, and even though I did like it initially, I was disappointed with the movie. Yes, the dynamic between Charles Xavier and Magneto is still there, and it works. Uh, some of the actors are really good, but overall, it's a mess. The new characters aren't that interesting, with the exception of Jean Grey. I don't know why Mystique is the main focus of this movie. The Wolverine scene, while cool, didn't really need to be there. Rose Byrne didn't need to be in here. Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse was very underwhelming and mediocre as a villain. And I just didn't give a shit about what was happening in the final battle. It was just a giant, misguided mess that I really wanted to like. I loved X-Men Days Future Past, but this is the X-Men 3 to the newer X-Men trilogy. It just ended on a whimper. So let's jump into another disappointment that I wasn't really looking forward to because I didn't know much about, but having to think about it a little more, especially the second half of this movie, I dislike it, and that's Morgan. This movie had a really great premise. When I saw the trailers, it reminded me of Ex Machina, the idea about confronting artificial intelligence and how to handle it. And you got some really good people in this movie like Kate Mara and the girl who plays Morgan. And then all of a sudden, it switches gears from this intelligent science fiction thriller to this really poorly made action movie with a bunch of kung fu and martial arts and a final scene in the movie that makes you go, you gotta be kidding me. It just ruined the movie. That second half ruined on a potentially good movie. But at the very least, we'll have the real Ex Machina. I don't downright hate this movie, but because I've had time to think about it and because the second half just ruins the whole movie, it kind of deserves to be on my list. At number 10, but still deserves to be here. Number nine is a movie that also falls into the realm of disappointment. Uh, and it was a movie I actually forgot I saw, mainly because it was a Netflix movie, which I know to some people might not count, but screw it. If a bunch of critics can put Beast of No Nation on their best of list last year, and if House of Cards and Orange is the New Black can get nominated for Emmys, then this deserves to be on a worst of list. And that's Pee Wee's Big Holiday. Uh, I really love Pee-wee's Big Adventure, so I was excited about the idea of another Pee-wee Herman movie, and this one just falls into the realm of awkward uncomfortableness. And there's just a lot of things that happen in this movie that make you go, why is this here? Why does Pee-wee Herman live in an old 1950s style neighborhood that when he leaves, it's suddenly the future? It worked in Pee-wee's Big Adventure because you had Tim Burton at the helm, who had an eye for creative and weird things, but this movie, not so much. I don't hate this one, but it's definitely another letdown, and... <sighs> Number eight comes another movie that I should have liked, wanted to like, but just ended up not doing it for me. That was Cafe Society. Woody Allen's latest film 
is so poorly made. Uh, it's got an ugly orange glow to the movie whenever it takes place in LA. It's a very predictable and kind of nonsensical story. Uh, Woody Allen's narration gets annoying at points. Uh, it's awkward to watch Jesse Eisenberg play Woody Allen, uh, especially when he gets mad. Uh, it's just a movie that kind of goes through the motions and becomes very predictable. Woody Allen's movies have always been kind of hit or miss. This is one that was definitely a hard miss. Now we come into the part of the list where these are actually legitimately bad movies that I really dislike. Uh, and especially with this one, since I've had more time to think about it, Independence Day Resurgence. Uh, when this movie came out and everyone was talking about how atrociously bad it was or how disappointed they were, uh, I was laughing because I was like, guys, the first Independence Day movie wasn't that great. I may enjoy it, but it's a B movie. And given Roland Emmerich's track record, you knew this was going to be dog shit. Why were you even at the least bit surprised? It's got really boring new characters with Liam Hemsworth and Jesse Usher. No Will Smith. Even though you have Jeff Goldblum back, he doesn't really help the movie all that much. Bill Pullman is sleepwalking through this thing. And it has the balls. It has the audacity to build a mythology that's not really that interesting to begin with and leave it on a cliffhanger to say come back for the next installment it did have some cool moments here and there the cg at times was really cool some action scenes were fun to watch but on the whole this was just a really bad movie in the end i don't hate it as much as other people do uh, that's why it's at number seven but i am glad that there will be no independence day 3 because this movie tanked Thank God. Up next at number six, we have the poor man's Guardians of the Galaxy, Suicide Squad. Uh, a lot of people were really looking forward to this movie, saying that it was going to be the one to put DC on track. I looked at the trailers and thought, I don't think this is going to be really good at all, but you never know. And sure enough, no, it wasn't good at all. This movie I don't downright hate, but at the same time, there's nothing about it that I really liked at all. The action's kind of uninspired, the soundtrack is distracting. Will Smith was good in the movie, but he was just Will Smith. He never turned into Deadshot. Jared Leto is terrible as the Joker. He's just so wasted and just not a really fun Joker to watch. He's just so poorly done. And Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn was so underwhelming. Her accent kept going in and out, and she's never the true Harley Quinn that we deserve to see. And this is a movie that's bad that even people that liked Batman vs. Superman said, yeah, this one was dog shit. We'll get to that movie a little later, but Suicide Squad as it is, I don't hate it, but I don't like anything about this one. At number five, we have the most boring movie of 2016, a movie that's so dull that I actually fell asleep twice while watching it. And that's Assassin's Creed. I went into this hoping that it was going to be the first good video game movie. I mean, because you got Michael Fassbender, you got Marion Cotillard, you have some money invested in this thing. So what could go wrong? Well, everything. The story is nonsensical. Some of the action scenes are poorly done and edited. The animus is laughably bad. The performances are downright bad. And it's just so generic. It is without a doubt the most boring movie I saw this year. Uh, with the exception of one unintentionally funny scene in which there's a prison riot uh, and none of the security guards in the prison have guns or tasers on them with the exception of this one woman cop who suddenly pulls out a crossbow out of her ass. Uh, that is probably the most amusing thing about this movie. Other than that, it's a dull snooze fest. Skip this one altogether. Number four, we have Nine Lives. Uh, I know it's kind of shocking that this movie is at number four and not number one. Because by default, just the fact that it exists and that Kevin Spacey is in it playing a talking cat, you just have to wonder... How does this movie exist? Why is Kevin Spacey in this? But the reason that this movie is at number four and not number one is because this movie is everything that the trailer said it was going to be. Even though the trailers looked like a joke, it didn't look like a real movie, it does exist, but it delivers on everything you'd expect from that trailer. If this movie didn't have Kevin Spacey, Christopher Walken, or Jennifer Gardner in it, I would not even put this on my worst of list because... Well, you kind of knew it was coming anyway. But just by default that these three actors are in this movie, especially Kevin Spacey, uh, this is on the list. At number four, because there were three movies I saw that were even worse. At number three, we have Alice Through the Looking Glass, uh, a movie that I went out of my way to see just because I didn't upload a video on time. Yay! 
This movie is just awful all around. Uh, it has no regard to the source material. It's dull. The backstories they give to these characters are forceful and just downright laughable, especially for why the Red Queen is the anger-inducing bitch that she is. You just watch that segment and go, are you guys fucking for real? Seriously? It's just a gigantic waste of time that completely disrespects the Alice in Wonderland stories that Lewis Carroll wrote. And especially in a year when Disney earned my trust with their live action remakes with The Jungle Book. If you hated Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, there is no reason at all to watch this movie. Number two is, in my opinion, the most pretentious movie of 2016. A movie that so many people want to rally behind and say it's a misunderstood masterpiece. Uh, to the point where I just roll my eyes and go, really, this movie? Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Yes, I will still say, I'd still love Ben Affleck as Batman. I still love the warehouse scene. I still like Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Uh, but this movie, unlike Suicide Squad, made me angry. And I actually had to think for a while which movie was worse, Batman vs. Superman or Suicide Squad. Uh, I think Batman vs. Superman is worse because it's attempting to be something greater than it actually is. It's trying to be another Watchmen. Uh, it's trying to be one of those movies that's going to stand the test of time, and it fails miserably. Even a three hour long extended cut does not help the movie. If anything, it made it worse. Outside of those things that I love, Henry Cavill in this movie is a boring, fucking dull Superman. Jesse Eisenberg is awful as Lex Luthor. His plan is nonsensical. The finale with Doomsday is just a gigantic CGI mess with no emotion to it. And they kill off Superman in the second movie. That way, when they bring him back for Justice League, there's not going to be any more emotional stakes on whether Superman's going to die because he already died. So fuck this movie altogether. For those that do like the movie, go ahead. Like the movie. I'm not going to stop you. Enjoy the movie all you want. But stop trying to convince other people that this is going to be a masterpiece like 2001. Stop trying to tell people that this is a movie like Psycho, where the critics hated it originally, but as time went on, it's gotten better. No, this movie is going to stay dog shit from now until eternity. So that's my long Batman vs. Superman rant. What could possibly be worse than that? As angry as I got with Batman vs. Superman, I did say there were some things in it that I liked, uh, that were just so buried in shit. Uh, but there's nothing worse than a comedy that tries to be funny and just fails miserably. I'm talking about keeping up with the Joneses. Huh? When I saw the trailer for this movie, I was dreading it. Huh? I was absolutely dreading this movie. Huh? And then when I went to the press screening and saw that it was directed by Greg Metella, who did Superbad in Adventureland, I thought, okay, maybe this has some potential. Maybe this could be funny because I really like those two movies. Shit. This thing was anger inducing. I really like Zach Galifianakis. I like Ezra Fisher. I like John Hamm. Gal Gadot, eh. But this thing was just so lousy, predictable. And it's just one of those movies like Hot Pursuit where the actors are not given any good material. And they're just improving their scenes, trying their best to make the audience laugh. And it's awkward, unfunny, and anger inducing. The only good part about this movie is the cameo by Patton Oswalt, uh, probably because Patton Oswalt always makes me laugh. Huh? But outside of that, it's just totally dull, stupid. Ugh, I don't know what else to say about this movie. It just plain sucks. There you go. Keeping up with the Joneses, my worst movie of 2016. So there you go. That's all the bullshit when it comes to movies in 2016. Huh? It's been a shitty year overall, but I said I'm going to end things on a positive note. So check back tomorrow where I talk about my 10 favorite movies of 2016. I hope you enjoyed this list. Leave a comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are on these picks. What were your least favorite movies of 2016? And as always, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.